You are listening to Open Science Talk, the podcast about, well, open science. This is episode one, and with us today we have Stein Høydalsvik, senior advisor at the University Library at the University of Tromsø. And today's topic is the big one. What is open science and why do we need it? Stein Høydalsvik, welcome to the first episode of uh, this uh, podcast. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Um, so today's topic is what is open science and why do we need it? And um, for me, I'm pretty new to this. So open science is uh, something a bit abstract. Um, I think it might be some sort of an ideal or a vision of how science could be. Uh, but I also understand that open science has developed and it's already been implemented in uh, different areas of publishing. And that there are communities that are working on a wide range of solutions for making science more uh, open. But I'd love to hear your take on this. Could you explain what open science is? That sounds uh, to be a very simple question, but uh, the answer is not so simple. Um, I will try to give you uh, three answers uh, to that. First, a very short one. Um, Open science is equal to science uh, or the core values of science. So you can say open science, that is science, or at least it should be uh, what science uh, is. A more descriptive answer uh, will be that open science is a global movement uh, to make scientific research results and uh, data available and accessible to everyone. And the long answer uh, is kind of a definition. There is no single definition of open science, um, but uh, open science is about extending the principles of openness to the whole research uh, cycle from discovery and analysis to writing, publication and outreach, and through this fostering sharing and collaboration as early as possible. This is a systemic change to the way science and research is done today. The focus in open science is usually placed on open research data and open access to scientific publications, but covers also open software uh, called open source, open peer review, the quality assurance uh, process for a publication, open lab books or notebooks for sharing lab notes, and open educational resources. And there are more also uh, included in uh, the open science term. But there is still the question of why this is important for uh, both um, researchers and uh, the public. About the importance uh, of open science, we can say that transparency and knowledge sharing are critical uh, for all research. When scientists share their underlying materials and data, other scientists can uh, more easily evaluate and attempt to replicate them. Increasingly, the reproducibility of science is being questioned and we are facing the term reproducibility crisis. An open science approach with shared data will help to increase the reproducibility of work as well as to help uh, mitigate against manipulation of data. And then you have a second argument for open science Uh, that is uh, uh, sociological. Scientific knowledge is a product of social collaboration and its ownership belongs to the community. And this can be extended uh, to a democratic argument. All citizens should have free and open access to public funded research. And finally, you have a third argument focuses on the benefit for the science itself. Open science can help speed scientific discovery. When scientists share their materials and data, others can use and analyze them in new ways, potentially leading to new discoveries. We have an uh, impressive example uh, in a new advance in uh, treating spinal injuries, which was uh, discovered in an analysis of data from a 20 years old basic research uh, program, originally written off as useless data. Newly invented techniques made those data from the original failed experiment to highly valuable data. In most cases, will negative or failed data be deleted by researchers? It was not so in this case. And open science is also a necessary tool when trying to answer immensely complex questions, such as neural basis of consciousness. This is based on the fact that these types of investigations are too complex uh, to be carried out by a single uh, individual, and therefore they must rely on a network of open scientists to uh, be accomplished. And finally, 
Another example is a call from international science funding bodies to share research findings that can help fighting Ebola. They are calling on journals uh, to make all publications in any form whatsoever, articles, preprints, etc., including uh, all in underlying data available as open access resources as quickly as possible. And they are also calling on scientists who are conducting research on Ebola to do their best to share their findings as quickly as possible. But um, so let me follow up on this. Uh, there seems to be a bit of criticism in open science uh, towards today's system. Am, am I wrong about this? No, uh, there are reasons why open science are, uh, has become a global movement. And uh, those are mostly based on shortcomings and counterproductive properties in today's system. Science is broadly understood as collecting, analyzing, publishing, reanalyzing, critiquing, and reusing of data. But there are a number of barriers that impede the broad dissemination of scientific data. These include financial paywalls when trying to access published results, restrictions on usage applied by publishers of data, poor uh, formatting of data or use of proprietary software that makes it difficult to repurpose. And finally, you have a cultural reluctance to publish data for fears of losing control of how the information is used. We have already mentioned the um, reproducibility crisis. Researchers have reported uh, being able to replicate only 40% or less of cancer biology results and a large-scale attempt to uh, replicate 100 recent psychology studies successfully reproduced fewer than half of the original results. This is a real crisis uh, or, or trust uh, crisis uh, in the science. So what is the biggest obstacle for open science? Two major forces work against adoption of open science practices, habits and reward structures. First, most established researchers have been uh, actually practicing closed science for years. This shows the need for a cultural change uh, in the research communities. Second, scientists, like other humans, uh, tend to repeat uh, behaviors that are rewarded and avoid those that are uh, uh, punished. This represents the need for changes in the way evaluation is uh, done, both from funders and from research institutions. Today, researchers publish journal articles summarizing their studies methods and results. Uh, articles are vetted via the peer review system, uh, in which an editor and a few experts assess them for quality for before publications. But the primary data and the materials underlying the articles are almost never reviewed nor even asked for. In a report from OECD's Global Science Forum about best practices for ensuring scientific integrity and preventing misconduct, they identified a wide range of behaviors by scientists which they labeled misconduct. For example, fabrication of data, falsification of data and plagiarism. All examples of what everyone will recognize as research misconduct. But they included also not preserving primary data, bad data management, and withholding data from the scientific community as misconduct, data-related misconduct. This is the, the way the system today works. There's also been some criticism about quality. Yeah. Um, and, and so some of the criticism is that with open science and open access, um, you have a lot of... Um, uh, publications that, that wouldn't make it uh, onto the, the larger uh, publishers. There are good, uh, there are good uh, publications uh, that are, uh, uh, you have to subscribe for. There are uh, bad publications you can uh, subscribe for. And, and that's, the, that's the same way in open access. Open access uh, contra toll access, uh, where you pay for uh, access, is only a way of disseminating the, the, uh, the content. And then you have some um, economic uh, methods uh, to how to, to actually um, have the possibility to, to disseminate the, the the content. Uh, so the quality uh, process itself doesn't rely on, on the way you disseminate the uh, materials. So there are good quality open access journals, there are bad quality open access journals as well as in the toll access uh, world. Uh, you mentioned a bit about the reward system. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the largest problem is that uh, researchers and, and scientists don't get an immediately reward 
uh, for being open. Uh, on the contrary, they might actually open themselves for unfair criticism mm. uh, on their mm. work because many people don't know their field of study mm. that well. Mm. Um, so what kind of uh, cultural change mm. um, and, and policy change uh, mm. has to be implemented to, to kind of uh, make scientists um, not uh, do open uh, publishing just because their ideals, mm. but mm. also because they actually get a reward? Yeah. The reward system uh, today is uh, is a bit strange, but uh, also uh, fully understandable. Um, when you apply for a position or you have um, uh, you want a grant for uh, for doing research, you present uh, your earlier work, uh, the, your your papers, um, and and today it's quite normal to evaluate on where have you published your results earlier, and not what have you uh, published, but where have you published? And that had created a kind of uh, luxury uh, scientific journals where uh, the prestige uh, connected to publishing in those journals are are what uh, counts, not what uh, the content or the results you have published, uh, but where you uh, happened to publish it. So um, instead of evaluating uh, uh, the the uh, the product, you evaluate the um, wrapping up of, of the product, the, the journal itself. That is the, the um, ugly face of, of, uh, of this uh, process. And in open science, you say the statement is that uh, we should evaluate uh, the uh, researchers on what you actually have done uh, and not where you have uh, happened to uh, publish the results. I'd like to ask you also, where is open science today? Today, uh, open science uh, are, and uh, open access as part of open science are uh, consistently uh, included in national research uh, agendas in Norway as well as in European Union. Uh, and Netherlands, uh, as mentioned, uh, is known as a pioneer in the field in Europe and presented a national platform for open science in 2017. In uh, Norway, we got a national strategy on uh, open access to research data in uh, December 2017, and an important part of uh, the larger open science picture. And open science represents a cultural change in the way universities and other stakeholders in the research, education and knowledge uh, exchange communities create, store, share and deliver the outputs uh, of their activity. And this transition uh, will not be straightforward to deliver. There are challenges ahead, like necessary changes to the academic reward system. In a survey uh, with responses from more than 2,250 researchers around the world conducted by the publisher Wiley uh, showed in 2014 uh, showed that about half of the researchers made the data publicly available and primarily then as supplementary materials to their publications. That is, if the publication was openly available, then the data will also be open available. But uh, that is uh, not the case in most cases here. Um, 40% said they did so because the journal required that and 26% of the researchers were hesitant to uh, share the data due to concern that the uh, research could be scooped. Uh, my own institution, UIT, the Arctic University of Norway, has more than uh, 10 years record of actively support for uh, open access movement uh, and has supported archives uh, for open data for more than four years. In all these years, uh, the uh, university had been one of the leading institutions in Norway in promoting open access to uh, publications and to data. And the ambitious goal f uh, for the coming years is to be a national leading in open science by 2022 by strengthening the uh, demand for open access to publications uh, and as well as uh, the research data but also in offering training and education in open science to our researchers and to our PhD students in particular. So, so the whole idea here is, is to create uh, open um, access points for, for the entire research cycle. Uh, yes. Both the research, the publication, the yeah. peer review. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing this is quite a um, huge task. It's it's a huge task, and uh, and we try to eat the elephant by bite for bite. Yeah. <laughs> so start, st starting with the the most the easy one, uh, where we uh, actually can control and move forward uh, in this uh, open science direction. But uh, if you want to uh, to have the the complete picture before you start, uh, then you will never be started. Stay here last week. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.
Hi everyone, this episode is produced by the University Library at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway, which is the northernmost university of the world. This was the first episode of this podcast series about open science, and we are already making more. If you are interested in open science, then you could visit our website, opensciencetalk.com, and subscribe to our newsletter so you get notified whenever the next episode drops. Or you could also hit the subscribe button on the podcast platform you are currently using. Thank you.